So this is uh, Europa's uh, fuel tank. It's a polyethylene LDPE tank and it's uh, partially transparent. Uh, you could see the fuel line right here. It's about half full and that's basically what I'm detecting to, um, to measure the fuel level in the tank without inserting any probes into the tank. Uh, let me show you the basic concept by first turning off the, the shop lights and I'll use a flashlight and, um, to show you what happens. Okay, so uh, if I hold the flashlight behind the fuel tank and view from the front side, you can see how the fuel lights up and there's very little light above the fuel line. But the interesting thing is if I move the flashlight above, look at that. So now the uh, air above the fuel lights up and uh, the fuel is dark. So if I move the light across, you can see that sharp transition. And that's basically what I'm measuring uh, with photo detectors to tell the fuel level. And it works fairly well because the contrast, the light contrast across the two, uh, two regions is about tenfold, ten times uh, light contrast. So in the implementation, I'll have a board here that will contain a strip of LEDs and another board on this side that will have a, a strip of uh, photo detectors and a display of some type inside the cockpit. This board, this board is the uh, LED board. Uh, it has four infrared LEDs on it that flash in sequence. Uh, because it's infrared, you're not going to see any activity while it's on. Uh, this board is uh, homemade. I made it myself using the laser printer toner transfer method. Um, you can also get it done commercially. It's, it's not that expensive. Uh, but this is a fairly sparse board. There's only a few components, so I just uh, did it myself. Uh, it's double-sided copper, and each LED is driven by a, a transistor. So there's the transistor and an LED that's uh, uh, at its driving. Uh, and the reason for the transistor is to reduce the load on the driving line. So uh, that's the board. And uh, uh, there's a ribbon cable that attaches this board to the detector board that's going to be on the other side. So I'm just going to attach this board temporarily with uh, some scotch tape. So this is the detector board. It has uh, 10 photo detectors, one inch apart, so that it can detect the fluid level when it falls between any of these two detectors. But the uh, main function of this board is really on this side. Uh, here is the microcontroller. That's an Atmel AT Tiny 40 chip. It's a generic microcontroller, nothing special about it. Um, four of these outputs are driving this op amp. It's a quad op amp which in turn is driving the LEDs through this uh, pin connector here. The LEDs are on for 2 milliseconds and off for about 200 milliseconds. So a very short duty cycle, but they are driven at 750 milliamps during the two, 2 milliseconds. So that could produce some noise in the lines, and that's the purpose of this uh, capacitor is to filter out that noise. The average current is only about 10 or 15 milliamps. Um, that is being consumed. Uh, here is a regulator, 5 volt regulator, and these are all the detector outputs, all of the 10 detector outputs that's being fed into the microcontroller, which does the calculation, and then it sends out a display signal that goes out through these pins to the display unit. So there's the board. Um, again, this is a homemade board using the laser printed toner transfer method, and this green stuff you see is the solder mask using a product called Dynamask 5000. Uh, it uh, helps with the uh, uh, surface mount components. Without the solder mask, uh, uh, soldering the surface mounts is, uh, is difficult. So let's uh, hook it up and see what it does. So here's the LED connector. And here's the power. Now all of these connectors could be simplified 
uh, and cleaned up considerably. And this here is the data line that goes to the display unit. And I'll just attach it with a tape here. Okay, let's look at the display. The display is this board here. Now, you don't really need a board. You could drive this uh, bar of 10 LEDs directly from the detector board. If you had a ribbon cable, then you need 10 lines, or actually 12 lines for power and ground and all that. But uh, if you do it with a single wire, then you need decoding, and that's what all of this is doing, and then it drives the... Uh, 10 LED bar. This board I got it made through a commercial place, uh, Osh Park. It's pretty cheap. It's uh, $10 for three of these boards. Um, so that's what this board is. So let's put it back here. And let me turn the power on so you can see how it works. Okay, so there it is. It's showing seven bars out of 10 uh, for the fuel level. If I rock the fuel tank so that the fuel starts to slosh a bit, you'll see the LED bars showing some activity. So there it is. Now, if the uh, if something happens to the communication line, uh, it'll display an error. So let me pull that. See there, so that's the error signal. So you know you're getting a good signal if it's. Uh, showing uh, uh, solid bars and I chose this to be the error signal. So let me put that back and the same thing happens uh, the same thing happens if you unplug the LED or if something happens to the LEDs so there there it is that's the error signal when the LEDs are off so that's for reliability now let's uh, go take a look at the uh, LEDs themselves on this side. Now these LEDs are not visible. I can't see any activity here, but on the camera you should be able to see that they are flashing. So they are on for about 2 milliseconds, off for about 200 milliseconds, and they are cycling uh, through roughly 4 times a second. Okay, another Another function of this board is this detector here. I put that in there so that it can automatically adjust the brightness of this uh, bar display depending on the ambient condition. So if I turn on the flashlight here, it, the LEDs become brighter. See that it's a brighter display. Uh, and if it's uh, dark, LEDs become dim. So it automatically adjusts for the uh, outside light conditions. So uh, the whole cost of this board is probably under a hundred dollars. The most uh, expensive part were the LEDs, those four uh, infrared LEDs on the other side. They were about nine dollars each, but the rest of the components are cheap. The microcontroller is probably two dollars and the rest of the parts are pennies. Uh, that is if you don't count the time that uh, is spent building this thing. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know.